I would like to welcome each one of you today to our study. We are in the Gospel of Mark, and today we are finishing up chapter 11. And uh, I want to read verses 27 through 33 of Mark 11 for us today. And uh, then there are some things here um, that I want us to look at in our devotional time. It says in Mark 11, verse 27, it says, And they came again to Jerusalem, and as he was walking in the temple, there come to him the chief priests and the scribes and the elders, and say unto him, By what authority doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority to do these things? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I will also ask of you one question, and answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? Answer me. And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say, Why then did you not believe him? But if we shall say of men, they feared the people, for all men counted John, that he was a prophet indeed. And the answering said unto Jesus, We cannot tell. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Neither do I tell you by what authority I do these things. So what happens in these verses is very simply um, that the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ is questioned here. And uh, we're going to see some things about this questioning of the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ in these verses today. But as we come into these verses, let me say this. You and I, as children of God, have no, que no, uh, no uh, reason, nor do we have a right, to question the authority of God in our lives. We need to understand that He is sovereign, that He is in control, that He is Lord, that He is the absolute ruler. And that when He asks us to do something, that we are not to question why it is that He wants us to do it. And when he gives us direction to do a certain thing, I am not to be looking at doing something else until he gives me the direction on that he has something else for me. Too many people, when a little bit of hardship or a little bit of difficulty comes their way, they automatically assume this can't be God's will anymore, and they seek something else or seek the mind of the Lord in regard to doing something else. And friends, it's important for us to understand that difficulty or adversity does not necessarily mean that God is calling you or all of a sudden calling me away from what we're doing to do something else. That um, God grows us through these experiences in our life and regardless of what we're doing, there will be times of difficulty and there will be times of adversity in our lives. And we need to be careful that we do not question the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives. If we compare Mark 11 verse 27 with Matthew 21, 23 and Luke 20 and verse 1, we would find that Jesus is in the temple teaching when the chief priests and the scribes and the elders come to him and want to know where he got his authority from. And we see that in verse 28, that they question the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. They want to know where his authority is coming from. It says in verse 28, And say unto him, By what authority doest thou these things, and who gave thee this authority to do these things? You know, as, we, as they question the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, let me say this as well. We need to be very careful as the servants of God that everything that we do, that we're doing it with the authority of God upon our lives, that we have the blessing of God, and that we're not going in our own strength, and that we're not following our own wisdom and our own understanding and our own ideas and what we want to do, but we're following God and we're doing what He is that He wants us to do. And, but here they question the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, by what authority doest these things, and who gave thee the, this authority? Now, the, the question needs to be asked is, what are they talking about when they say these things? I have no doubt in my mind that what they are questioning here when it comes to his authority is that they are first of all questioning by what authority, what authority does he have to teach what he teaches, and what authority did he have to cleanse the temple? Keep in mind, he just got done cleansing the temple in the verses just prior to this. And you know, friends, as I we we obviously know that his authority came from heaven, as he's going to direct in just a moment. But but first of all, let me say this: we need to be careful that we act in the authority of God, 
that we do not go out on our own so that when somebody comes to us and, and they ask the question, what authority do you have for doing what you do, that we can say that we have the authority from God and that we have it based on the Word of God. Now, it's interesting many times when people ask Jesus a question. There were times that he would answer the question, but then there were other times that he wouldn't necessarily answer the question, but that he would put it back on them by asking the people who asked him a question, he would ask them a question back. And that's exactly what Jesus does in this passage. You know, it's verses 29 and 30. And Jesus answered and said unto them, I will also ask of you one question, and answer me. And I will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? Answer me. So, Jesus poses this question to them in verses 29 and 30. And this is an important question that cannot be ignored. It was not just an important question that day, but it was also an important question today. Where did John get his authority to baptize? Was it an authority that came from men, or is it an authority that came from God? And as we study through the pages of history, and in particular church history, we find out that that is a very crucial question. Where did John get his authority to baptize? And he asked that question, and as he asked that question, the scribes and the Pharisees and the chief rulers find themselves on the horns of a dilemma. And notice they talk about that in verses 31 and 32. It says, they reason with themselves, saying, if we shall say from heaven, he will say, why then did you not believe him? But if he shall say of men, they feared the people, for all men counted John that he was a prophet indeed. So it was one of them situations where they say, hey, listen, if we say that we believe that his authority came from heaven, then Jesus is going to ask us, why did you not believe him? Why did you not follow the message that he preached? Why did you not submit to his baptism? But if we say that he, that, that authority came from men, they feared the people, for the people that were around him considered John that he was a prophet, that he was a man, as the word of God says, that was sent from God. So they, they don't know how to answer this question. If they answer it one way, they're going to be in trouble with Jesus. And if they ask, answer it another way, they're going to be in trouble with, with the men that are around there. So they come to the place that they decline to answer. It says in verse 33, they answered and said unto Jesus, we cannot tell. And Jesus answering saith unto them, neither do I tell thee by what authority I do these things. Now the answer to both of these questions is from heaven. Where did Jesus get his authority to do what he did? He got that authority from heaven. Where did John get his authority to baptize? He got that authority from heaven. And nobody can deny the validity of John's baptism without denying the authority of Jesus Christ. That's one of the reasons why the question that Jesus asked is such an important question. Let me ask you today, as we close, by what authority do you do what you're doing? The things that you're doing right now in your service for God. Are you doing it with heaven's authority upon you? Are you doing it because you know that God called you to do it? Or are you doing it in order to get the accolades and the praise and the applause of people? Um, friend, the message that you're proclaiming, whose authority is on it? Are you preaching simply for the applause of men? Or are you preaching with the authority of heaven upon you and because the authority of heaven is upon you and God has called you to preach the message that you're preaching, you're preaching thus saith the Lord, preaching exactly as it's written in the word of God and letting the chips fall where they may. You know, that's a good question to ask. By what authority do you do what you're doing and who gave you that authority? Something to think about today as we conclude our study on Matthew, on Mark rather, chapter 11. Have a great day.